Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have with us John Voris, who is the founder of Authentic Systems. John, welcome to the program. Oh, thank you for having me. You're welcome. Hey, uh, we're uh, talking today about a really interesting topic, so I'm excited to learn about it. Um, is your college-bound student too intelligent and being held back from massive opportunities? So I really want to dive into that topic. I know a lot of people will find that quite interesting, but give us a little bit of uh, background on yourself and then what led you to working with uh, college-bound students. Well, I uh, began uh, at uh, Berkeley. I graduated in philosophy, and I spent a great deal on communication. And uh, later down the road, I found myself in uh, 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 creating a, an assessment test based on uh, European concepts that seem to be uh, much more accurate, having to do with uh, what people, who people are being rather than what they're doing. And uh, that, uh, that makes a profound difference, especially for... Uh, the students uh, 15, 16, 17, 18 years old, they're not quite sure what they want to do, but their, motiv their motivating energy is still present. And so what I do is I tap into that. Yeah, and, and uh, let's talk a little bit about that assessment because that will lead us right into the concept of being able to properly motivate a college-bound student. Yes. So what I do is uh, – I ask a question such as, uh, uh, what, uh, what made you angry? And I want to know the exact events. And maybe someone, uh, uh, you, some of you dropped a coin out of your pocket and somebody else picked it up and then they denied having the coin so that I would say, well, why did that make you angry? Well, some students would say, that's because I know he has it. Some people would say, because it's not fair that uh, he took my coin and uh, now I don't have it. The other one is um, uh, it's not right that he, he's taken this and I need that money because I need to make some purchases. And so in a sense, it, that person in, uh, disempowered them. And uh, the other one is uh, you just don't take things from other people because it hurts them. So they really do have uh, a different variety of ways of actually communicating the same event. A lot of so perspectives like, around the same event, yeah. Yeah, so by doing that, um, uh, I'm able to uh, also follow up with questions. So why did that get you upset? Because it wasn't unfair. Well, tell me about why it wasn't unfair. Uh -huh. then I, now I'm getting into another level of questions, which a written, doc, a rich, uh, written questionnaire could not do. And so by going through this process of layering, uh, I find out what really motivates them beneath their personality and beneath language. And when that assessment and really um, revelation happens, is, is it, does it become easy for that person, whether just student or parent, to then realize, okay, in this specific situation, I mean, right this minute, I used to think this way, but now I realize that I'm, I'm sure it takes practice, but isn't that the goal of this assessment is to kind of maybe lift the blinders a little bit? Well, that's part of it. A major part of it is self-acceptance. Oh. So, for example, I had one um, uh, client uh, sent me his son, and son wanted to be a uh, police officer like the dad, and uh, went through college well, about uh, third year and started to slow down, didn't take as many courses, and, um, uh, uh, and, and they finally dropped out. And so the father was all upset and didn't know what to do. So I assessed him. And uh, what we discovered was uh, he was a justice person, and justice people do not like to cause conflict. So as a highway patrolman like his dad, what do they do all day? They give out tickets. So on another level, he didn't want to be the one giving out tickets, causing conflict in other people's lives. Wow. And he and I got it in the same moment. But what we also got in the same moment was uh, uh, I, I asked him uh, what, what other classes uh, did he like, and he liked uh, victimology. 
to study uh, victims and w- okay. what what they're all about, and, and it made a big difference. And and here's the thing. Um, from hearing that example, it's not like you said, oh, we've now discovered something. You now need to go be a hairdresser. No, it's, it's mm-hmm. all in the same realm. It's just a tiny little pivot, a tiny little shift, and that makes all the difference in the world. Oh, absolutely. And so once we understood that, uh, 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 I wanted to see if he liked the idea of uh, 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 just being an officer uh, in control of uh, people that, who are on parole. And he loved it. He loved the idea. And so he went to college, he finished up, and he got a job uh, up north as a parole officer. Nice. So so that's now laying the foundation of the assessment and really dialing in how that can guide um, a a college-bound student. Let's now talk about the premise of what we uh, we mentioned at the beginning here. Is your college-bound student too intelligent and being held back from opportunity? What's that all about? Well, quite often, uh, uh, schools w- will be testing on what you know, what you've learned, and what you can do. And uh, uh, highly intelligent people uh, find themselves very bo- bored quickly. Bored is the word. And they don't have the interest, uh, they don't care, and the grades show up just like that. And when, But when you sit and talk to them, and you're looking for who they really are, they're very, very bright. Then by finding out, let's say, that they are really designed to uh, enjoy uh, detailed uh, knowledge and they really don't have a grasp on, saying, English class where it's all emotions and feelings, then you can see why they're not getting that uh, better grade. And and, and in any course that's like that, they're going to have a difficulty with it only because that's not who they are and, and it's boring to them. And so I could find this out in an assessment rather quickly. And, you know, the people, kids especially, they're always told what they're not doing right and yeah. why they're in trouble. And so to, if, you, to, if you tell them, you know, the, ro- the reason why you're having a difficulty is you're very, very bright, they change. I mean, wow. in, that, in that moment, it's a, it's a miracle. Nobody tells them that. So I find it interesting what you said about um, a very bright, intelligent student might be getting not as good grades or bad grades in certain subjects, and you're thinking, well, why? They're just off the charts smart. They should be getting good grades, and then they should care about it. But it all stems from this a feeling of I'm not being challenged, I'm bored, and then it gets into apathy. They just don't care about, you know, you got to see. That should really rock your world and make you feel horrible. But, yeah, not really. I'm, I'm bored. I'm not challenged. But yet you get them in a class where they're challenged and they're engaged, and it's A++++, right? That's exactly right, and uh, I've had that happen um, where they pulled uh, their child out of the, out of the uh, school and put them into a private school, and uh, they blossom. They can really wow. blossom because some of these teachers really pay attention to them. Remember, uh, public schools are designed to accommodate the average or the norm. Mm. So if you have someone who is above the norm, they get left out. Uh, intelligent people come up with ideas that others don't. And because they, then they feel like the outsider. Sometimes they're ridiculed. Sometimes even the teacher will ridicule the child when the child is really being very imaginative, uh, uh, exploring new ideas, and they don't get the credit. You have to fall in line with the norm. And so that's often the problem. Did you, um, what you're saying there reminded me of something right on point but off topic, which is, did you ever see the movie Goodwill Hunting? Yes. So it reminds me exactly of Will, who's off the chart smart, but a janitor. And then he got in, involved with the math teacher and got to the point where he was so far beyond this highly trained math teacher who was world renowned that he, um, he almost started getting belligerent and making fun of the math teacher because of his level of intellect. That doesn't make it right, but it just c- comes to the point where, um, you know, some parts of someone's life might be messy or disorganized, but in this one area, they just are off the charts. You've got to figure that out so you can turn that dial to true north, and then now they feel fulfilled. Oh, absolutely. And uh, tests, again, are, are uh, homogenistic. They, 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 they're not designed to pick up on uh, the most brilliant uh, uh, student in the class. And um, 
and quite often people like in the movie, when they were younger, uh, they could be ridiculed, uh, ignored, um, uh, and, and because they're not part of the group. They're, they're, they're not invited to the football game and, or yeah. to be on the team, and, and basketball, et cetera. And so it really has a negative impact. But uh, when I do an assessment, I find out uh, what they really are, what really motivates them beneath all of that. Because I can also find out that they're getting these Ds because they really don't care. And but when it comes to science, they really care. And yeah. so they, they could have an A in science and they'll have rest are Ds and maybe even an F. And he's on probation and the parents are uh, really uh, stressed out. And when actually they're not focusing on the talents that this person possesses. Then they're, and you're not supposed to have. Uh, it, when I'm hearing you say that, it makes me think, well, if you're so intelligent, why doesn't it just burn you up to no end to get B's and C's and D's? Um, you should bring everything up and just work at it, but they can compartmentalize and go, here's where I'm good, and I don't care about the rest. Give me a D, whatever. I'm focused on this. Oh, absolutely. Another one uh, famous for that are the pragmatists. Pragmatists are very practical. Okay. And so a high school student reading Russian history looks at that and says, why am I doing this? This was in 1840. Uh, that's not going to help me at all. They don't read yep. the book and they get a bad grade. Yep. Well, it makes me think, lot, too, yeah. that if that starts happening where maybe the, even the student doesn't even realize what's going on. They just know they got, they just love this one subject and other ones. And, and maybe the teacher then kind of treats them a little bit differently because come on a D you're, this is not good. And then the parents a little bit like what's going on. Doesn't that become a really bad hit to their self-esteem? Oh, absolutely. Because yeah, exactly. Because all they're told is what they're doing wrong, what, what they're being wrong. They're being the outsider. They're not following um, uh, the protocol. And they're always the outsider. It's just they can't help it. And so the other is, is if you always, if somebody's telling you you're wrong all the time or laughing at you, uh, after a while, you don't want to say anything and you assume they're right. And that's where the self-esteem really drops. Now, I've got I know people who are bartenders uh, who have an IQ of 140 and had the same problem in school, but as time went on and they made the wrong choices, they can't go back now. And yeah. they're just brilliant people. Well, doesn't that then almost set the new norm? Like you, um, after you've been told enough times, enough times, and you feel enough times that you're not worthy, doesn't that set the bar now down low enough where you're like, I guess that's just me. But in reality, it wasn't you. And if you had been on a little bit different path, who knows what potential could have been met? Oh, yeah, you find yourself resigned. It's just yeah. resigned. And you resign yourself to the norm, and the average, because that's where you really, in a way, want to be. You want to belong, but what, what's the cost? What's the payoff of the cost? Yeah. And so the, this is what happens to a lot of kids. And uh, I want to try to correct that as much as I can. And once the parent really sees who his child really is, a, a, a miracle happen. It really does. Yes. Very good. Very neat. Okay, so now um, the first part of... Our premise here is your college-bound student too intelligent. We've really uh, painted that picture well. And that then leads to being held back either internally, like your feeling of self-esteem, and even from outside, maybe teachers or parents that maybe even aren't maliciously being mean about it, but it's just, you know, the way that maybe their tone is. Let's talk now about how it keeps them from potential opportunity. Well, that's an interesting point. If Let's even assume that uh, there's a child who's doing very well uh, in grade school and, and on into college and, be, and decides to, or parents want them to be a veterinarian, and they become a veterinarian. Well, the thing is, that's not who he was. And who he wanted to be all along was uh, being an attorney, for example. But his parents didn't want him to be an attorney because they didn't think well of attorneys. And so in that case, he's, going, he's not going to be happy in the current job he has because he's turned his back on who he really is. And then, of course, another way, is, uh, which is more common, is uh, you're being held back because if you're always told you're wrong, 
then your your sight on what sh- what your future should be about, of course, as we said, it drops, and uh, so you become satisfied with something that is really beneath your capability, and it always shows up in in being miserable, uh, not ever finding happiness, not finding uh, joy in life, and always feeling like there's something missing. But on the other hand. What happens when that is fixed and you figure it out, right? Yeah. When you, so, for example, when, uh, uh, when my one student found out that he was a justice person and his real problem was uh, uh, writing out tickets, uh, and he, he thought, well, being a probation officer is per- perfect because I'm helping the person rather than causing conflict. They love the job. Is there problems in the job? Of course. Is every day great? No. But he, on an overall, he's content now. He's uh, uh, part of the pl- uh, police department, and he's following dad's footsteps, and he's doing what he really wants to do. Now, imagine if he went forward with that and became a highway patrolman giving out tickets every day, there's a good chance he'd wind up quitting. And I've seen that happen, too. Yeah. Wow. Well, and, and then let's, let's even think about some, those are some, you know, even intangibles. There's tangible aspects, right? Because if that last point that you made, he would end up quitting, that, that has a monetary um, aspect of a missed opportunity. You know, if you quit, then now you go through a period of time where you're going through anguish and looking for another job, and maybe you couldn't find a job that paid the same. So all of this has such a strong domino effect, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. In fact, uh, 67% of those who graduate from college do not use their degree as intended, 67%. Uh, another 40% after graduation wish they had changed their major. So this, what's happened is kids enter college with a certain idea coming from parents, coming from uh, uh, their peers, uh, people who influence them, and not who they are. They don't have a chance to find out who they are. And so in the very beginning, as time goes on, they do. But now you've gone through a couple of years of tuition. You, you, you can, a lot of people can't go back and retake these courses because they find out that their major was wrong. They end up really stuck quite often. And it costs a lot of money. I mean, as you well know, it's about yeah. uh, 100 grand to get a four-year degree. And so parents are putting out this money, and they're following, the child is following the parent's dream is what's happening. And if it shows up later that they're not happy, but they'll go through it or they'll quit. And now that money is wasted. Yeah. And, 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 and it might not even be total quit. It might be like, oh, I'm going to you know, change my major, change my major, change my major, and I get done in five and a half or six years, and then that's just way more money that you didn't need to spend when the solution is having a clear assessment that would bring that kind of authentic life, you know, purpose out to give both parent and college bound student that direction. So then that, you know, frees up all of this we've been talking about. Oh, yes. And in fact, um, you know, sometimes you'll find that you hear a remark, well, uh, uh, he's, uh, uh, he's a career student and uh, doing just what you said, going from one major to the next. What that tells me is he's listening to everyone else but himself. Yep. And he hasn't found, he or she has not found what they really want to do, but they're not allowed to. They've been told, we're always told what to do, why we should do it, and we're not allowed to make that first choice by ourselves what we really want. But we can't find it because we've been told what we should want. It's really a... Uh, uh, a real problem. Yeah. Well, John, let's um, let's wrap up with this. We talked about a lot of really, really good stuff. And how can someone who hears this and thinks, "I wonder what this could do for my college-bound student," what's the best way they can reach out to you, find out a little bit more about this assessment, and maybe uh, connect with you? Oh, sure. Uh, first of all, there's uh, John at authentic-systems.com. That's my email. I'll always answer that uh, first. Uh, another one is just go to my site, uh, johnboris.com, and there's a way that you can contact me there. Excellent. Well, John, thank you so much for your time today. It was really good talking with you, and I appreciate you coming on. Well, thank you.
You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.